And hello, this is Jonathan Frazier coming to you live. We are back in Norfolk, Virginia for the third game and the series finale against the Old Dominion Monarchs hosting your Florida Atlantic University Owls. The Owls taking the first two ball games here in the series by final scores of 10 to five and 12 to seven. They have now won seven games in a row to improve to 15 and four overall and of course winning these two opening conference matchups against the Monarchs. The Owls also have six games in a row in which they've scored 10 or more runs, which is second highest all time, ties three other occurrences of that. I'll get into that a little bit later. With one more 10 run game, they would tie the program record. Before we get into the starting lineups here today, let's go ahead and take you to our pregame chat with head coach John McCormack. Here in Norfolk for game three of three against the Old Dominion Monarchs with FAU head coach John McCormack. Coach, I don't know if you've noticed this in our two pregames prior, but I have completely not talked about the weather here in Norfolk. I'm going to talk about the weather today. This isn't baseball weather. This is cold and windy and the sun's out, but it doesn't really help much. No, it is. It is. Uh, I never talk about the weather. You know how I feel. I never let the players talk about it, but it is. It's tough, man. It is blowing right in our face, and it's got to be wind chill in the 30s, you know, high 30s. It's, it's, but conference did a really good job scheduling all the southern teams to go north opening weekend. Uh, really good job, Conference USA. Well, you talk about the, uh, the weather affects both teams. So how does the weather, how does a weather like this specifically affect pitching? Well, it's hard to get a grip on the ball, um, especially with the wind blowing. It's hard to get a grip on the ball, um, and it's it's hard to stay kind of loose and warm. You know, um, it, it's more difficult to hit with the wind blowing in your face. Um, you know, especially when it's this cold out, your eyes have a tendency to water, so it's hard to pick up the ball. Um, maybe. As the sun gets higher, maybe the wind will die down a little bit, but I hope so. Yeah, it's blowing right now. Um, specifically, Coletti, uh, Vince Coletti tends to tends to go a lot with the breaking pitches, right? So, so what does that do for him? Does it make it better, worse, harder? Again, more you got to have a grip. You know, it's it's uh, it's about the grip. So. Um, you know, we bought some hot packs for their hands. Um, and, you know, the umpire will probably let them go to his fingers um, on the mound as long as they wipe. Um, but it's, you know, this is the one, you know, baseball is baseball, but this is the one time where, you know, if you're up here all the time, you have a better feel for. It's uh, it's about the grip, so um, you know we bought some hot packs for their hands, um, and you know the umpire will probably let them go to his fingers um, on the mound as long as they wipe. Um, but it's you know this is the one you know baseball is baseball, but this is the one time where you know if you're up here all the time, you have a better feel for preparing yourself to pitch in this weather. Not that it's any easier, but at least you're, you're more prepared for it. So um, I'm just hoping that, like I said, by an 11 a.m. game time, which that's early enough, uh, that we get, uh, maybe the wind will stop blowing. I, I wonder if uh, as hot as the offense has been recently, if cold weather is gonna be the one thing to cool it off. Could be. I, I, I certainly hope not. The guys are in a good frame of mind, but you know, uh, again, I never talk about the cold weather around them. Because uh, I always say that by the time you get done and you get in the shower, you'll eventually warm up, but the <laughs> loss stays with you all year. That's true. Well, uh, so 
did some research, some crack research last night in the record book. Um, six, six straight wins has happened four times in program history. Seven straight wins has only happened, I'm sorry, six straight 10 run games has happened four times. Seven straight 10 run games has only happened once. So it took a six inning ninth to get 10 last night to get 12. Um, if you get 10 or more today, you're gonna tie a program record. Wow, um, that's good. That's good. Let's hope so. Um, whether we win, we score 10 or whatever, I just want to win. Um, so that, that part uh, doesn't change. Um, but I think the guys are in a good a good mindset. They're aggressive. They feel good about themselves. They feel good about each other. Um, so we're looking forward to a good game. You'll take a one to nothing win for a conference sweep. Uh, yeah, I'll take a half. <laughs> half to nothing um, for a conference sweep. Um, especially, it's, you know, I, I tweeted about it last night, but really proud of these guys. It's been, it has not been ideal conditions. Um, uh, and then we have to get up early to be able to catch a flight to get home, which a lot of people don't understand either. You know, uh, Sundays on the road, it's scramble, man. You got to get him out of bed early. You got to get him fed. You got to get him over to the park. The game gets over. It's hurry, hurry up, shower, get through security, drop off the vans, the rent vans. Um, it's a, it's it's a. You, you finally sit down in that in the seat in the plane, and you go, oh, did we did we did we forget anybody? <laughs> uh, did you gas up the vans? You know, so uh, it's always. Uh, uh, Sundays are always a little bit of an adventure. That's true. You, uh, people that, that, that just tune in for the games and hopefully for this pregame interview don't realize all the things that go into it. Heck, we were at Food Line this morning at, at whatever time picking up drinks. So yeah. there's all kinds of little things that go into it, not just the games. No, no, it's a, it's a full, when you, you know, every day you have to feed, you know, 35 people three times a day, um, you know, and, 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 and it's not like, there's a set time because it all depends on the game and you know then you want to make sure that you know last night we did it in the hotel we had stuff brought in because I don't want the guys to have to go back and shower and change get in the vans go eat sit and eat which I would rather sit in the restaurant and eat but I also wanted to make sure they got the rest so you know it was a little bit more work for Brian and the guys and and we were getting the drinks and Brian was getting the food and um but our guys are good about it. They they understand. They help out, chip in where they can, and um, uh, they know everybody's working as hard as they can for them. And to wrap it in a bow, as you say, and to, to get you know a little warmer. Um, back up a few questions. You talked about you tweeted last night. You're a must follow on Twitter. Your handle is at FAU Coach Back. Yes, and people should follow you immediately. Correct. Yes. Yeah. If not sooner. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think Twitter's I, – I enjoy Twitter. I think it's a good thing. Um, I know uh, it has caused some consternation for some people in their lives. Um, uh, but I, I think it's good uh, to get your message out, and I think it's it's for the people that follow. Um, I, I keep it very FAU baseball, FAU athletics. Uh, my personal beliefs are my own, and, you know – I don't think you should try to mix the two, um, but I, 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 I think Twitter's good nowadays. I, I, I think it's a good um, way to engage the fans, and you know, I know, I know a ton of our alums out there follow the games while they're working or while they're doing whatever through Twitter. So uh, uh, I know they ask, they want more updates, and I see you don't understand. John's by himself. He's got a. <laughs> He's got to do the game on the radio and then tweet. It's tough. Um, I've been doing better. I've gotten yeah. more up there. I know. I know people are watching. People yeah. are, are reading. So. Uh, so, uh, but you know, I I uh, I just want to thank you. You know, for all that you do. Again, a lot of work that no one sees goes into a lot of stuff. You help the coaches out. You help myself out with stats and you know putting stuff together for the guys to see raw numbers sometimes you do the radio and you help me with the drinks at food lion you're unstoppable <laughs> well thank you and good luck today with uh with this with this game three and keep warm 
Yeah, thank you. I You're going to get to keep warm. I am. I know the press box is enclosed. Um, I'm not complaining. Uh, just if the wind would stop, we'd be in business. But I don't know if that's going to happen. But uh, it's fun. It's all – it's the same for both teams. That's right. We'll make it work. Yeah, good luck today. Thank you. Appreciate it. That is head coach John McCormack. As you can hear, just and we found a sunny spot to do the pregame interview. You could hear, you could hear it was cold. I mean, the wind is blowing and gusting in. Um, current temperature here. Let's get the latest update. Is here we go. Norfolk. It's sunny. Yeah, that is true. It's 45 degrees with the. 14 mile an hour winds. It feels like 39 right now here, and I know, uh, I know the coaching staff is cold, and uh, you know they're not going to be running around like the players are, trying to keep warm. John, Coach Mack found a, well, back where I'm from we call it a toboggan, but I guess they call them beanies or, or knit caps here. Um, I don't know where the heck he found that. He sure didn't pack it on his trip, but he he went out to the. Uh, to the umpires meeting with one of those on his head, so he's a little warmer than uh, than he was when we did that pregame interview. Let's get into today's starting lineups for the series finale against the Monarchs. First, for your Owls, leading off and playing shortstop is Tyler Frank. Joe Montez hits right behind him. He's at third. David Miranda in the three-hole is in right field, and the cleanup batter is designated hitter Pedro Pages. Cody Wilson will bat fifth. He'll be in center field. First baseman Gunnar Lambert hits sixth. And the bottom third is second baseman Eric Rivera, catcher Kevin Abraham, and left fielder Diamond Johnson. Frank is short, Montez at third, Miranda in right. Pages is today's DH, Wilson in center, Lambert at first, and then Rivera at second, Abraham catching, and Johnson in left field. The Owls will go with Vince Coletti for the fifth straight Sunday. He's 1-1 one one with a 2.66 earned run average. For the homestanding Monarchs, leading off playing center field is Matt Schwartz. Bryce Windham will bat second today. He'll play left field. Culver Lamb will play third and bat third. And the cleanup hitter is first baseman Vinny Pasquantino. Will Morgan in right hits fifth. Kyle Battle in left hits sixth. And the bottom third of the ODU lineup today is the DH, Eric Stock. Second baseman, Tommy Bell. And catching, Devin Adams. So it's Schwartz in center, Windham in short. Lamb at third, Pasquantino at first base, Morgan in right and Battle in left, and then the DH stock, Bell at second, and Adams catching. Morgan McGuire getting in his final few warm-up tosses, a junior right-hander will face the Owls. He's 2-1 and one with a 3.42 on run average. And we'll give you more of his stats as this game goes along. So if you're tuning in for the first time this weekend, first of all, shame on you. We've been here for three days now but the owls are winners so far in the series by scores of 10 to 5 and 12 to 7 these being the first two games of conference usa play as the league slate opens up all across the conference this weekend owls are going to wear their sunday reds today red tops with gray bottoms Red tops, white numerals, navy blue outline on the lettering and the numbers. The uh, gray pants have the navy blue stripe down the leg with red stripe on each side. Old Dominion has, I guess we could describe that as maybe Carolina bluish tops. The lighter blue, navy blue numerals, and white outline. And they've got white bottoms here today. So Frank will step in. Batting 314 now. Four home runs and seven runs batted in. Hasn't had quite the RBI opportunities that he had throughout last season after moving up into the leadoff slot, but he's been getting on base, and he's up to nearly 450 on base now. And at 11.05, he takes a pitch low and inside, ball one. So 
Frank going to have a slow roller on the third base side of second. He will beat out the throw from coming across Tommy Bell for an infield single to start this ball game. That is Frank's fourth hit and eight at bats here in Norfolk. Now Montez has had a bit of a struggle here in his first battle against Conference foes. He's one for nine with an RBI and a run scored. Batting average still at 308. Could be asked to drop down a bunt here. He pops it up though, and it's going to be caught in foul ground by Devin Adams. And yet another sacrifice opportunity goes by the wayside for your Owls. Frank at first with one out. David Miranda now three for nine with a home run. He had that yesterday. At that point, it was a four to three game in the, what, sixth or seventh when he hit that home run. Takes a look at a pitch low, ball one. It was a, to lead off the sixth to make it four to three. The Owls would score nine more runs in the ball game. Overall, batting 246, two home runs, and eight runs batted in. Should throw over to first, and Frank back in head first. The ODU defense, Pasquantino at first, Bell at second, Wyndham at short, and Lamb at third. And then left to right, it's Battle, Schwartz, and Morgan. Get a chopper foul down the first baseline, one and one. Devin Adams behind the plate with the balls and strikes. So the only change is Morgan to right. Morley is out for ODU today, at least to start. Eric Stock is the DH. One and one to David Miranda. Going to sneak this one through the right side past the diving bell. Frank's going to go first to third. The Owls in business here in the top of the first. Now Pedro Pages, his normal Sunday designated hitting duties. He usually starts the first two games of a series at catcher and then gets the Sunday off from the field. Batting 351. Pedro had a three for five night last night and this series. He's four for ten. Looks at a called strike on a breaking ball here. 0 and 1. Frank led off the game with a, an infield single. Advancing to third on Miranda's single to right. There is one out. The 0 1 bounces in. Knocked down by Adams. One ball, one strike. And this is where you can already look back and where Montez couldn't get the bunt down. Frank would have been at second when Miranda singled. Could be already a one to nothing lead. And outside again to Pages, two balls, one strike. McGuire in 23 and two-thirds innings has given up 23 hits, 10 runs, 9 earned, with 3 walks and 14 strikeouts, batters hitting 250 against him. Pages waves at a nice breaking pitch there on the outside half to even the count at 2-2. Two and two. McGuire, six foot two, two hundred and five pounds. He's a junior from Rumson, New Jersey. Break even pitch is hit to short to second for one on to first. That is a double play, and the Monarchs will get out of the inning. They strand Frank after a leadoff single and come up empty in the top of the first. We'll head to the bottom half and tell you all about Vince Coletti right after this.
Junior right-hander Vince Coletti takes the hill. His first pitch to Matt Schwartz is chopped towards the middle of the diamond. Frank fields it, throws, and just barely, barely retires. Schwartz, who did not agree with the call. One pitch, one out for Coletti, who is one and one with a 2.66 earned run average. He's He's been good as the Sunday starter for your Owls. I mean, he's going to be overshadowed by the numbers preceding him. Mendick and Marmon. We'll delve more into that. First pitch to the left-handed batting. Bryce Windham is a called strike. Coletti 20 in the third innings, 19 hits. Six runs earned, four walks, and 19 strikeouts. Upstairs, ball one. He has started against what's well going to be every weekend series. He started against right back to Coletti on a hop. Fields his position under hands to Lambert. Quickly two down. He went six innings against George Washington. Two runs. Four innings against Delaware. Two runs. Five innings against Oregon. Five and a third. Two runs. And then threw five shutout innings against Seton Hall. And picked up his first Al victory. That was this past Sunday. Now he faces Culver Lamb. And a called strike to him. 0-1. Coletti, of course, Comes to the Owls from Palm Beach State College. The 0-1. This is low. One ball, one strike. Batter's hitting 253 against him, and he does well to limit his walks. Just four of them in 21 innings now. The 1-1. Good breaking ball there. One ball, two strikes. For a quick first. Doesn't get the outside corner there. Two and two. Kevin Abraham behind the plate today. First to third as normal. Lambert, Rivera, Frank, and Montez. Left to right, Johnson, Wilson, and Miranda. Two, two. Did he go? He did. No appeal. Home plate umpire says he went around. Chris Finwood doesn't like it. Culver Lamb doesn't like it. But that is a strikeout of Lamb and a 1, 2, 3 first for Coletti and your Owls. Coming on just nine pitches. Go to the top of the second inning. We'll see Cody Wilson lead it off for your Owls in a scoreless game.
Top of the second inning, scoreless ball game here between your Owls and homestanding Old Dominion Monarchs, Cody Wilson, who had a two-hit game yesterday. And he's hitting 229. Has a one and one count to him as he swings at a breaking pitch off the plate away from McGuire. Cody is at 229 on the season here against the ODU squad. He's two for nine. He's got a two and one count to him. Fouls had two one and one out in the first. Double play into that threat. Foul ball off the bat of Wilson, two and two. And low on this offering to run the count full. Called third strike on the inside corner on the payoff. And that is the first strikeout for McGuire. Daniel Mascaro is behind the plate today. Grady Smith, our first base umpire. Keith Schartzer is at third. Gunnar Lambert watches this pitch go by outside half, ball one. Gunner is at 211, three home runs and six runs batted in. Fights this one off to the left side. That's going to reach the parking lot, 101. Gunner's three for eight at 375 in the two games prior here. The Owls is a team hitting 307 in the series. Lambert ahead in the count two and one with eight extra base hits, and those all came last night and kind of escaped my attention. Then on in Friday's win, they scored ten runs on ten singles and some other factors, but every hit was a single. Foul ball off the bat of Lambert to even it up at two and two. But last night, six doubles, a triple, and a home run. And in the last two innings, they scored three in the eighth, and six in the ninth, they had four extra base hits in those two frames. Break even to Lambert. This is low and outside, and the count is full. Lambert has drawn nine walks this year. And he'll take his tenth now. And Pete Rose style hustle down to first. Probably just trying to stay warm. He's on with one out. And now here is unquestionably the Owls' hottest hitter, Eric Rivera. Eric is four for seven in the series with seven runs batted in. And he's raised his batting average all the way up to 288. It's over 100 points higher than it was at the beginning of the week. Looks at a pitch up, ball one. In last night's game, Eric had four runs batted in. Had a two-run triple, a sack fly. Had another hit late. And this one comes inside. Rivera claims it hit his jersey. He's not going to get the benefit of the doubt there, 2-0. Lambert at first, not a huge threat to steal, but a good base runner, good heads-up base runner. Called strike up high. One and two. Two and one, my mistake. The 
Bear pops this one up to shallow center. Coming in and fighting the wind to make the catch. The Schwartz, that's going to be a theme of the day for sure. Outfielders are going to have probably some difficult routes to the ball, even on routine flyouts like that one. Now for the first time in the series, we're going to see Kevin Abraham, the Owls backup catcher. Batting 120 on the young season, but he did have a three-run home run this past midweek against North Florida, his first home run in three years, actually to the date of his prior collegiate home run. Takes it low ball one. Pops this one to third. It's going to be an in-between hop off the chest of Lamb, and he won't have a play. Started to charge, slammed on the brakes because he knew that it was going to hit that high hop. Going to be an error on the ODU third baseman, Lamb, putting two on with two out for DJ Diamond Johnson, 160 hitter. Double a home run, 12 runs batted in. Diamond is 0 for 6 in the series. Searching for his first hit against the Monarchs. Looks at this one a bit low, 1 and 0. Lambert at second now. Abraham at first. The 1 0. Called strike, breaking pitch from McGuire. That walk that McGuire issued to Lambert only the fourth this season for the Monarchs right-hander. The error extending the inning. for the inside corner gets the call. It's one and two. I have no issue with that ruling. Lamb fields that cleanly, cleanly with Abraham running. He's got an easy play at first. So it's one and two in the pitch. There's a chopper to short. Underhand to second base to end the inning. So the Owls will strand a couple here in the top of the second inning. And it remains 0-2-0. Zero zero. Pasquantino, the owl killer, up to start the second after this.
Benny Pasquantino trying to bunt for a hit against the shift and pushes it foul. Nice thought by the left-handed batter, Pasquantino. The Owls employing this. Montez, the third baseman, playing pretty much second base. Rivera playing the softball rover position in shallow right. Instead of playing second base, Lambert's hugging the line at first, and Frank is playing shortstop and third on the left-hand side. 0-1 oh to Pasquantino. Takes a look at one off the plate away, 1-1. One one. He's 3 for 8 in the series with 5 of the Monarchs' 10 runs batted in, and most of his hits, yes, have come to the right side. 1-1 one one is hit the opposite way. Wouldn't you know it to the left, but it's foul. 1 and 2. Of course, when you've got the shift employed as a pitcher, Coletti's going to have to work on the inside from the inside half in because you put it on the outside part of the plate, Pasquantino goes with the pitch and he's running all day. The ODU first baseman and a very good one, batting 316 overall this season with 20 RBI. And he's going to He's going to hit it up the middle for a base hit. Hit it between, well, he hit it where a normal shortstop might be playing or at least be able to make the play. Right fielder, number seven, Will Morgan. First hit, first base runner for ODU. Leading off the second in a 0-0 zero to zero game. Now Will Morgan. Morgan is... Another left-handed batter hitting 222 in the series and 237 on the year. Coletti misses low and inside ball one. Yes, the sun is out. No, there are no clouds in the sky, but that wind is just biting. It's still blowing left to right. Inside again, and a nice stop by Abraham. Makes it a 2-0 count to Morgan. Morgan was the ODU DH the first two games. He's playing right field here today. Has three home runs and 12 RBI this season. 2-0. Misses low. Quickly, it's 3-0 to Morgan. Kyle Battle on deck. Here's a called strike. As this game gets deeper in and teams go to the bullpen, here's a 3-1. Swing and a miss. Brings it back full. You can definitely see where the Owls may be apt to go to a lefty out of the pen because Old Dominion's lineup today, two through five are all left-handers. And six through nine are all right-handers. Foul ball there at the plate. We'll do it again. Two through five lefties. Six, seven, eight, nine, and then back to the top. To the leadoff batter, Schwartz. All righties. That could set up some pitching advantages late in this ball game for the Owls' pin. Of course, that's still a long ways away. We're in the bottom of the second, and a. Zero to zero contest. Another payoff pitch coming to Morgan. And that is ripped to right, but it's going to be right at David Miranda. Playing Morgan perfectly. Sort of an underrated part of a, a coaching staff as well as Kyle Battle is introduced. Brett Schneider, one of the Owls' assistant coaches, is in charge of the outfield, and you see him oftentimes leaning over the railing and positioning his players left and right, deep and shallow, and kind of, kind of an unheralded position. Battle first pitch swinging. This is to shallow right center. It's going to be Wilson stepping in front of David Miranda to make the catch two down. Of course, that's sort of a position that's only noticed when something goes wrong. If 
the Owls defense employs the shift and the batter goes the other way, or if there's a big gap and that's where the batted ball goes. But that also goes hand in hand with the pitching and the pitch calling and where the the catcher is positioned. So it's all it's all a finely tuned machine. Eric Stock now, DH for Old Dominion. First pitch misses off the plate away. Stock has appeared in both games as a Friday night starting pitcher. Last night as a pinch hitter, he had a RBI single. And then starting at DH today, fouls this one off to the right-hand side out of play. It's one and one. Asmatina still at first after the inning opening single. And another foul ball. This one's going to reach the road for sure. It's one and two to stock. He's 1-2, and reaching out to stay alive is Stock. Poking it off the screen to our right. Count stays 1 and 2. There goes the runner. Here's the throw down, taken on a hop by Rivera, and he's out. Eric Rivera with a nice scoop and tag to end the inning. So the minimum retired in the second, even with the hit on the caught stealing. This is two innings complete, and this is a 0-0 zero to zero game. Tyler Frank leads off the third against McGuire and the Monarchs. Go to the third inning, still nothing and nothing. And Tyler Frank leads off an inning for the second time. He led off this game, the first, with an infield single, was stranded at third. Takes one under the hands for strike one. Tyler raised his average to 324 with that single and, yes, extended his hitting streak to... I'm not mistaken. 15 now. 12 plus 3. Yes, sir. 15 straight games with a hit for the Owls shortstop. Fouls it down the third baseline. Does Frank. 0-2. Morgan was ready to go, but the ball was still out there on the field as a member of the ODU, probably bullpen. Chases it down. The 0-2 misses in the other batter's box. Frank holds up. And the 
one two is another strikeout. Second of the game for McGuire. Now it's Joe Montez. Montez tried to bunt Frank over in the first, but popped it up in foul ground, caught by the catcher Adams. Swinging away here, he comes up empty on the pitch up, 0-1. The Owls with two hits, the Monarchs with one. Neither team, neither team has dented the school board here yet. This is a foul ball just over the stands to our right. 0-2. Montez had a hit in Friday night's game, went hitless yesterday for the first time. And a swing and a miss on a nice breaking ball there from by McGuire. Give him back-to-back -back punch outs. Joe had come into the series having hit safely in eight straight. So he extended it to nine on Friday, and that's where it ended. David Miranda had a single his first time up. He's one for one. Sort of a semi-shift against him. Shortstop playing closer up the middle, still on the third base side of the second base bag, but first and second, first hugging line past Quintino, and Bell has created a pretty big gap between he and second. It's a 2-0 and count to Miranda. It's funny that it's 3-0 now, but shifts overwhelmingly tend to come against left-handed batters. I guess left-handers have a tendency to pull more than righties, but you don't see a right-handed shift too often. And Miranda's going to draw a walk as that one misses off the outside corner. He'll reach the third straight inning that the Owls have had a base runner. Bringing up Pedro Pages. Pedro ended the first inning by grounding out into a double play. And we'll look to recover from that here. Two outs in the third. In the dirt outside, 1-0. First five hitters in this Isles lineup have started and played in every game. Make it 20 now on the season. For Frank Montez, Miranda, Pages, and Wilson. 1-0 pitch drops in for a called strike. Eric Rivera has played in every game. He has started 19 of the 20. Time called ahead of the 1-1. One, one. And just low two balls, one strike. If Pages could reach Cody Wilson. Do up next. Wire sets for the two on, throws over to first, and Miranda is back in without a tag. The Owls have one more road game before returning home. They'll play in Coral Gables on Wednesday. 2-1, a called strike on the inside corner against Miami. They defeated the Hurricanes 5-4 to four earlier this year in Boca Raton, and they'll have two more games down south. Miami this Wednesday, and then again on April 4th. Foul ball off the bat of pages, and we'll do it again. The yearly three-game set against Miami with one at home and two away. And then return home next weekend to have their home conference opener against Southern Miss. 2-2 again to Pages. 
Swings and misses at a breaking ball. McGuire's going to strike out the side in the third. Despite the walk to Miranda, the Owls have now stranded three. Or four, I should say, as we go to the bottom of three right after this. Eric Stock was at the plate when Pasquantino was caught stealing to end the second inning, so he will resume with a 0-0, zero 0-0 zero, zero zero count, and foul it off. It was a 1-2 and two count when Pasquantino took off. Fouls it off 0-1, and one. so it, it was as if that event never happened. The 0-1 pitch. Misses low and outside. Stock, Bell, and Adams, the bottom third of the ODU lineup. So Coletti spaced the minimum through two. Gave up the one hit. He's got one strikeout. This 1-1 one, one pitch fought off. We'll see if Lambert has room. He doesn't. It's going to exceed the patio setup that Old, Old Dominion has out down the right field line, this new addition with got a grill and bar out there and some patio seating it's a tiered system it's really nice one and two to stock set into the plate breaking ball called third strike on the outside corner our home plate umpire Daniel Mascaro has a very deliberate third strike call so he rings up stock now, Tommy Bell. Bell is at 267 this year. He's 4 for 15. He came in. Let's see, he started Friday's game, went 0 for 4. And then yesterday, he came in as a defensive replacement and eventually had a single and a run scored at the plate. Squared to bun and takes it for ball one. He wraps this one over a leaping Tyler Frank and into left for a one-out single. Bringing up Devin Adams. Adams came in as a defensive replacement in Friday's game at catcher, had a hit, started yesterday and went over three with three strikeouts. We had the sombrero, not the golden sombrero, that's four strikeouts, not the platinum, that's five. So the first pitch to him is Coletti working out of the stretch, misses up high ball one. Adams batting 267, eight for 30, 
four runs scored, three runs batted in. He's also drawn seven walks. Throw over to first and closer play than I expected it to be. So back in safely is Bell. Bell this season, no stolen base attempts. The ODU freshman. Another throw over, and he's back in standing. True freshman from Kettering, Ohio. In the Dayton area. One oh. Bounces in. Nice block there by Abraham. Two balls, no strikes. Zero to zero. Top of the fourth inning. Two oh pitch. Got the inside corner. This is the longest inning. Game has been scoreless in the series. It's three to two after the first inning on Friday. Old Dominion put up a run in the third yesterday. The Owls came back with two in the fourth, and Old Dominion tied it in the bottom of the fourth, two to two. Well, I guess it would be the same if Old Dominion were to score in this inning. It would be the same as last night. Bottom of the third, one out, runner at first, 2-1 pitch to Adams. There goes the runner, hit and run right at Lambert. He squeezes it, steps on the bag, and that will end the inning. So, again, it will be a minimum faced Situation for Coletti as he gets the double play to end the third. Heading to the top of the fourth inning, scoreless. And Cody Wilson leads it off for your Owls after this. Wilson Lambert Rivera scheduled to bat here for FAU in the top of the fourth in a 0-0 zero to zero game. Breaking ball fools. Wilson 0-1. He struck out looking, looking excuse me, his first time up. 0-1. Swing and a miss there. 0-2. The Owls have had two hits, and they've stranded four. Old Dominion's had two hits. One was caught stealing, and one was erased on a line-out double play, so Coletti's faced nine batters in three innings. 0-2, this one's lined to left, coming in, slamming on the brakes is battle. He'll put it away for out number one. Now Gunnar Lambert. Lambert walked 
and was stranded. Should probably edit that. He was stranded technically at second to end the second inning. Fielder's choice. Takes a called strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Low and outside, one ball, one strike. And fouls it off to the left-hand side. Lambert has started all three games at first base in the series, which is going to give him now 17 starts at first, one at designated hitter. He also saw... I guess an inning of work at catcher. He's the he was starting catcher two years ago and then missed last season due to injury and technically would be the emergency or third catcher on the team if need be this year. Pages, Abraham. Then Lambert. They've also got Jeremy Kennedy Davis and Jacob Pino. Off the plate away two and two that I know I've Talked about them just as being unheralded parts of this team, catching bullpens and whatnot. Low and outside, three and two. Those guys, Pino was out in Oregon during the cold weather there. Kennedy Davis and Pino are here. Three, two. Misses, and Lambert's going to draw his second walk of the ball game. So it seems that McGuire has some troubles against lefties. He's given up a single and a walk to Miranda, and he's walked Lambert twice. So each of the four plate appearances against the left-hander has seen the Owl batter reach. Now Rivera flew to center. It's his first time up. Called strike to Eric, 0-1. That's 60 pitches for McGuire. With that offering, and we're in the top of the fourth. The 0-1. Inside. One ball, one strike. One is fouled off to the right-hand side. That's going to reach the street. That is dangerous. Tre was it treading, trotting? For cars going down this road during a ball game. Sledding, dangerous sledding. risky we'll say that and the one two is driven to left by Rivera but today the balls are not carrying it's caught by battle Rivera is 0 for 2 with two down Kevin Abraham this was the same scenario in the second inning an out a walk to Lambert and another out and then Abraham reached on an error to extend the inning Escontino having a quick word with McGuire prior to the first pitch to Abraham. Abraham first pitch swinging to short, and it's off the glove of Wyndham. Going second to third is Lambert. He stumbled, but kept his footing, and he'll go to third, and I believe that's probably going to be the second error. With again Abraham running. Wyndham did not get in front of the ball. He gloved at it and didn't squeeze it. 
Well, we'll wait and see what the official ruling is. We do know that it's first and third and two outs. And it is an error on Wyndham. So the same exact scenario as it was in the second inning. Diamond Johnson steps in with two outs. He grounded into a fielder's choice to end the inning. He's got another shot to redeem himself here. Takes it off the plate away, ball one. It was first and third. It was first and second when Johnson stepped in his first time up. 1-0. Called strike. 1-1. One one. Lambert takes his lead off third and foul ground. Abraham's off first being held on. The 1-1. One one. That's going to bounce off maybe even the foot of the catcher. Adams all the way to the screen. Three quarters of the way up the screen to score the Owls' first run. Wild pitch. Makes it a one to nothing game, and that's at least the third, if not fourth, run that's scored for the Owls on a wild pitch in this series. And that's going to bring on a dead sprint out of the ODU dugout. Their pitching coach it was Mike Marin. So Johnson's going to be facing a 2-1 count with now Abraham at second. Still two outs. The inning extending on the error. And the wild pitch scoring the run. Well, on Friday night, the Owls had ten runs with only six runs batted in. So you've got four runs that are unaccounted for, and you can't look at a box score to see how, but I know a couple of them were on a wild pitch. Last night, 12 runs, 11 RBI, so I think there was one more last night as well. Johnson lines this one into right center on the run, making the catch of Schwartz. That'll end the inning. couple of, well, one pitch too late if you're an Old Dominion fan. The wild pitch scores Lambert to give the Owls a one to nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning.
Old Dominion will have the top of their lineup in the fourth because Coletti's faced nine batters in three innings, and Schwartz's first pitch swinging too short. Tyler Frank over to first. He gets in by a step or two. One pitch, one out in the fourth inning. Coletti's allowed two hits. Single to lead off the second. And then with two outs, Pasquantino caught stealing. Gave up a single with one out in the third. Went on a hit and run. A double play into that inning. So now Wyndham grounded back to the pitcher. Coletti, his first time up. Missing low on the first pitch is 1-0. and And a called strike. One and one. Looks like it for the outside corner. Doesn't get the call. Two balls, one strike. Coletti's thrown. This will be his 40th pitch. He has had 25 of his first 39 pitches be strikes. Going the opposite way to Frank at short again. Throws over to first again, two down. Frank was playing a little opposite, a little closer to the third base bag than against the left-handed batter, and that's exactly where Wyndham hit it. Over Lamb now up, takes a called strike on one. His first time, he was a strikeout victim, one of two issued today by Coletti. The 0 1. Just low, one ball, one strike. One to nothing, FAU. Bottom of the fourth, two outs. 1 1 pitch. Outside as well, two balls, one strike. at the knees. Evens it up at two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Coletti squints in for the sign. Gives a nod. Two, two. Off the plate away. Vince has not walked a batter in this game. Just a couple Three ball counts that I can recall. Peeks around his glove at the sign now, and time is called. Not sure if Cleddy's having trouble. He's in the sun is to our right right now, coming across. And down the third baseline, it's going to be foul. We'll do it again. And maybe the shadows causing some issues with being able to see Abraham's fingers dropping down the signs. I don't know if Kevin has tape on his right hand or not. Catchers usually do. If not, sometimes they paint their fingernails so it's more visible. 3-2, and this one's over to second. Rivera puts it away. Three ground outs to... Wrap up the fourth, we'll go to the top of the fifth inning, and Tyler Frank will have his third leadoff at bat of the game right after this.
be Frank Montez and Miranda. And they will come to the plate. The Owls leading one to nothing in the fifth. Tyler Frank has singled and struck out. Simultaneously calls for an appeal with the catcher. And our first base umpire Grady Smith says Frank did go around 0 and 1. Singled in the first, struck out in the third. One for two. And behind in the count, 0 and 2. McGuire is up and over the 70 pitch count now. We'll see. He's kind of sort of their number one starter. And Frank went around again on strike three. And it's something, and I said this a couple of games ago, the batters don't get the benefit of the doubt on an appeal like the defense does. They have they don't have the option to to ask. If the home plate umpire says he went around, he went around, and Frank will strike out for the second time. And that's unusual. He doesn't have a ton of games that he he has more than one strikeout. Montez was also a strikeout victim his last time up, and he's 0 for 2. Should be equal rights for hitters. That would slow the game down more than it even is. One and one to Montez. Let's see, before this series, looking for the inside corner, doesn't get the call. Two and one. Before coming up north here to Norfolk, Frank had had two, three games in which he had had two strikeouts. 2-1 up the middle. Joe Montez is going to have a one-out one single, I should say, for his second hit of the series and the third hit for the Owls today. Now David Miranda. Well, this is where McGuire's run into a little bit of trouble against left-handed batters. Miranda singled and walked. Has singled, has walked today. All three of the walks that McGuire has issued have been to left-handed batters and one of the Owls' three hits. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball there. 0-1 to the Owls' big right fielder. Montez over at first, 0 for 1 on stolen bases this year. Speaking of 0-1, the pitch. This is low, one ball, one strike. So again, if you're a local Owls fan, local to Boca Raton, come on out to the ballpark next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, as the Owls host preseason Conference USA favorite Southern Miss, who started off the season very well, throw to first. And Montez back in standing. The Owls right now are 15 and 4. The Golden Eagles of Southern Miss are 14 and 4. They took a doubleheader yesterday after a Friday postponement against UTSA. They're currently playing the Sunday finale there. 2 and 1. And Miranda comes up empty. Swinging over top of the breaking ball again. Two balls, two strikes. Break even pitch. Miranda to second. Bell going to go to short for one. On to first and safe. And they nearly turned that double play. I didn't think they had a shot at it, but... A nice turn at short by Wyndham. Turns out to just be a fielder's choice. Bell didn't charge the ball and looked as if he was sort of the way his positioning was going. He was going to go towards first, and he quickly flipped it to short. Got Montez by a step or two. The return throw, Miranda beats it out. So two outs. Pedro Pages is 0 for 2 today. In Hattiesburg, in the top of the second inning, UTSA actually has a 4-1 to one lead over Southern Miss. 
long way to go in that one. First pitch to Pages misses outside, ball one. Gets him to chase a breaking ball outside. McGuire's got that pitch working today. Pitch tailing away from right-handers. One, one. Pages the opposite way. It's going to get past Bell. Miranda will go first to third. And the Owls with another two out mini rally here. On Pages first hit of the day. Bringing up the 0 for 2, Cody Wilson, who's going to get some last minute instruction from John McCormack. Wilson today, a strikeout and a fly out to the left. He's got Miranda at third and Pages at first. Upstairs, ball one, and the throw while going back to the pitcher from Adams. Miranda started to take off but thought better of it. One oh poke the opposite way and foul towards the owls bullpen. Down the right field line, it's one and one. It's two more hits for FAU. They got four in the game, leading one to nothing. Swing and a miss by Wilson. And there goes Pages. Coming to the plate, Miranda sliding around the tag. He is out. And John McCormack is going to come speak to the home plate umpire. I think he wants a balk. And this was the argument he had last night. He doesn't believe that the pitcher came set. He also thinks he also thinks here with his indication that the catcher is blocking the plate without the ball. But it's going to be the third out on a caught stealing to end the top of the fifth inning. We'll be back bottom half right after this.
in this one to nothing ball game. First pitch of the bottom of the fifth is fouled off by Vinny Pasquantino right right there around home plate. For strike one, Pasquantino singled in the second and was caught stealing. So far, Old Dominion has sent 12 batters to the plate. Excuse me, and they have had two runners reach on singles, and both of them are raced on the base pass. So 12 up and 12 down-ish. 101 count to Pasquantino. This will be pitch 50 for Coletti. Pretty economical use of his pitches. 1-1. One, one. It's another foul ball back. 1 and 2. So the Owls with the fourth inning run off a wild pitch. That's all of the scoring so far. Pasquantino's given up, or sorry, Pasquantino. Coletti's given up two hits, no walks, two strikeouts. And his 1 2 pitch is hit off the facing of the indoor batting cages to our left. Still 1 and 2. People here in all manners of dress. The one two is upstairs two and two. There's a guy down here in shorts, but he's put a jacket on his pants. A couple of young ladies wearing short sleeves. And then you got everybody else bundled up. This one's a jam shot, and Montez will pick it out of the air. Playing second base in the shift. Catches it on the short base, short stop side of of second. All that to say, it's a pop out to the third baseman. We'll make sure that they score that right across the way if they don't know who's on the shift. Oh, they got it right. They knew that was Montez. Now an 0 1 count to Will Morgan. Morgan has a line out to right. On his ledger today, he's behind in the count 0 and 2. So the shift worked well on that. Pasquantino at bat. The 0 2. It's low and outside, one ball, two strikes. A strike three called at the knees. Give Coletti three punch outs in the game. Bringing up Kyle Battle. And once again, got some words Kyle out of the Battle. ODU dugout, out of the ODU bleachers here. And our home plate umpires got his little notebook out of his breast pocket there to write something down. Called strike right down the middle of the battle. There's a one particular gentleman that has a very loud voice. It's one and one. It's Kyle Battle now. And the two one count. Battle flew out to center. He's 0 for 1 today. 2 1 pitch from Coletti. Comes inside and backing out of the way of it. This battle. It's 3 and 1. Coletti had a little zip on that one. It's 3 1 pitch. It's hit to short. Backhanded by Tyler Frank across his body in time. No, they're saying Lambert came off the bag, and John McCormack disagrees. He is racing out of the dugout, and he wants the other umpire to help out. I don't think Lambert came off the bag. He stretched, but I think he kept that foot planted. And that's going to be surely an infield single. 
They cannot give an error on that one. With two outs, there goes the uh, minimum amount of batter spaced for Coletti. On the two-out single by battle, officially. Lambert has been a very good first baseman for your Owls. No doubt about it. If Lambert had Pasquantino's height there, no doubt it's the third out of the inning. He did stretch, and he did kind of pop off, but I don't, I don't think his foot came off the bag. Just my opinion. Called strike inside. Or, I'm sorry, a ball inside to Stock 1-0. Oh. Stock, st Stock struck out looking his first time up. That is tough to say. Battle reaches with the infield single, the third ODU hit. Throw over to first, and Battle is back. Battle has one stolen base this season. He's been caught stealing three times. One zero is hit to second. Rivera to a knee, flips it to Frank, and that'll end the inning. So a uh, hit stranded. We'll go to the sixth in a one to nothing game in favor of your Owls. Cody Wilson was at the plate when the top of the fifth inning ended when Old Dominion cut off a runner in home plate, David Miranda. So he'll step back in and is down in the count 0-1. And, and here's a hard shot down the left field line, but foul. It's no balls, two strikes. It's one to nothing, FAU. In what has been a confrontational ball game with our umpires on both sides and with the fans as well. Low and inside, one and two, the entirety of the half inning break there. Coach Mack had a conversation with our first base umpire about the play to end, well, not to end, the play before the play that would have ended at the bottom of the fifth on the infield hit. Still one and two to Wilson, and by the way, McGuire, who's 
Only giving up the one run and just four hits is thrown with this, his 92nd pitch. And it will hit Cody Wilson on actually the back arm. You don't see that very often. Hit him on the right forearm. And he'll be at first with nobody out. Max Diaz is going to meet him at the base. Right-handed batter, and it cut in on him. Did uh, It avoided his front, his left arm, and came in and cut the inside near the elbow. He's in quite a bit of pain, it seems, but he'll stay in the game. Now Lambert, who's walked twice and scored the Owls' only run. Squares to bunt and pokes it just foul down the third baseline. Now Lambert is one of the Owls' best bunters. He uh, bunted for a base hit, actually, on, I think it was Friday night, when the Old Dominion doesn't, doesn't do the shift shift. They just kind of play him to the pull side. And there was uh, quite a bit of room there for him to lay down a bunt. Throw over to first, and Wilson's back in. The 0-1, Lambert's going to not offer with a bun, and instead will take a called strike, 0-2. And, and will drop back the two-strike count, and Lambert will take it the opposite way into left for a base hit. Putting the first two on. In the Owl's sixth for Eric Rivera. Rivera's flown out twice to center and to left. Oh, for two today, and the Monarchs have had a hard time getting him out in the series. Two for three Friday. Two for four yesterday. Kid here could create some breathing room. Before the first pitch, McGuire feigns back to second. Old Dominion looks to expect a bunt here, or at least playing as much as they've got Pasquantino in on the grass and Lamb ed at the edge of the grass. Rivera pulls back. He did square around, but takes it off the plate away, 1-0. We'll see the limits on McGuire soon. We'll whether or not they stick with him throughout this inning. He's in 96 pitches. The 1-0. And Rivera fouls it off on another bunt attempt, or at least. Yeah, an attempt at a 1-1. Kevin Abraham is on deck. And swings in. Rivera offers and this time came up completely empty. And if I had just said that Lambert's one of the team's best bunners, in my opinion, Rivera's the best, and he couldn't get one down here. He's behind one and two. So that's the third time in this game. He also tried a bunt and couldn't get one down. And he will with two strikes, and he'll strike out because he fouls it off. First out of the sixth brings Kevin Abraham to the plate. Abraham is 0 for 2, but each time with two outs, he's put the ball in play, and that's been a positive because both times Old Dominion has committed an error. And the second time, it led to the only Owls run, the only Owl, the only run of the game. First pitch to Abraham breaks too late, stays inside, ball one on 
on pitch 100 for McGuire. The 1-0. It's a called strike at the knees. One out. First two batters reach in this inning. Wilson was hit by a pitch. Lambert singled. Rivera could not get down the bunt, so there is one out. And a one and one count to Abraham. McGuire takes a look at Lambert, or excuse me, at Wilson at second. And another one. And this one is a called strike, one and two. Out the inside corner. One, two. That's going to catch Abraham in the back. Second hit batter of the inning. And that on a one, two count. Loads them for Diamond Johnson. Johnson has reached on a fielder's choice and has flown to center. And one more time, we're going to see pitching coach Mike Marin slowly walk to the mound. He's not going to. Well, generally, Marin doesn't make the pitching changes. I think this is just a stall tactic to give whoever's warming up in the ODU bullpen some more time because he, he did not hurry to the mound, that's for sure. And he's going to take as long as he possibly can to converse with. Let's see, he's got McGuire and the catcher, Adams. He's also got Lamb and Pasquantino there. The middle infield does not join the conversation. So now our home plate umpire, Daniel Mascaro, goes out. He will put an end to the conversation. And now, and just now as he reaches the line, does Mike Marin move into a jog. So he took as much time as he possibly could. Diamond Johnson to the plate with the bases loaded and one out. Swings and misses at a pitch and shakes his head because he shouldn't have as it dives into the dirt. 0-1. Fooled by the breaking ball there. one. This one's hit to second. To short for one. To first. It's a double play. And McGuire gets out of the inning. The worst case scenario for your Owls. With in all likelihood McGuire on the precipice of coming out of the ball game. He gets out of the jam with the double play. That is the second double play for ODU today and a big one. To in the sixth, we'll go to the bottom of six, and still just a one to nothing game in favor of FAU.
Bottom of the sixth inning, Coletti will face Bell, Adams, and Schwartz, and has a 1-0 count to Tommy Bell. Called strike here, 1-1. One one. Bell has one of the three Old Dominion hits as they trail Urals 1-0. Breaking ball fouled to the right hand side. It's one and two. Owls with the bases loaded and one out in the top half of this inning, but a double play gets Monarchs out of the jam. A one two. Fouled back. It'll stay right there. One ball, two strikes. On what very well could have been McGuire's last pitch of the game. It was a big one. 1-2, Abraham sets off on the outside corner. Coletti misses a bit high. Two balls, two strikes. Al's junior right-hander has given up three hits, no walks, three strikeouts. Zeros otherwise. He wants the next sign, and Bell wants timeout. Two-two pitch. Poked back to Coletti. He'll take it on the hop. Underhanded. Qu quite a ways away from Lambert, but makes it there for out number one. Usually you jog over a handful of steps before you three, lightly toss it, but that was, that was a good distance away. Adams, his first time up, lined into an inning ending double play. So he's 0 for 1. But he misses high with a fastball, 1-0. Oh. Gets a called strike here. Looked about the same spot. Adams is a 5'11", 200-pound sophomore from South Riding, Virginia. Breaking ball and a good one. Swing and a miss, 1-2. And the one two, low and away, two balls, two strikes. Set for the break even. This is away, three and two. This old Dominion squad has quite a bit of tradition. They've got eleven. Players make it to the majors. Coletti's going to issue his first walk of the game, missing high. And with one out, the catcher Adams trots down to first, bringing up Schwartz. Center fielder number 10, Cash Ford. The center fielder for this Old Dominion squad came into the game 5 for 10, but he's got two ground outs to short. You may know some of these names, this former Old Dominion players in the pros. Wayne Gomes was a reliever. Made his mark with the Phillies. Um, I personally remember Tim Hummel playing for the Reds in the early 2000s. Current uh, reliever for the Pirates, Daniel Hudson. And then a f I think most people know who Justin Verlander is. World Series champion now. Chopper to down the third baseline from Schwartz makes it a one-on-one -on -one count. Looks as if the ODU program currently has the one-one as a swing and a miss. Eleven players in pro organizations. That includes a couple of guys from last year's team, Zach Rutherford. And Jared Young. Pitch, swing and a miss. Got forced to chase one upstairs. And Coletti's going to come back with his fourth strikeout of the game. Two outs for Wyndham. Rutherford and Young made up the middle infield for Old Dominion last year, and both were 
extremely good offensive and defensive players. Sure, there weren't a lot of Conference USA opponents that weren't sad to see them go. One and zero to the left-handed batting Wyndham. Young last year batted 367 on the season. Rutherford was at 332. They combined for what 90 runs batted in. Rutherford had 56. Young had seven home runs and 34 RBI. Another 44 doubles. 2-0 pitch to Wyndham. That's a called strike. Two out, one on. This bottom of the sixth inning in a one to nothing game. And a breaking ball there missed somehow three and one. Called strike to run it full. Clitty already issued his first walk in this inning. Doesn't want another. And the payoff pitch is hit right back to Clitty. He fields his position well, underhands it once more, and that'll end the inning. So the one out walk is of no harm. So we go to the seventh. And it stays a one to nothing FAU slim edge. Tyler Frank is going to have his fourth at bat of this ball game, and it's the fourth time that he's let off an inning. He singled in the first, and he struck out in each of the third and fifth innings. It is a one to nothing ball game. The Owls plating a lone run back in the fourth on a wild pitch with two outs after an error, too, so it's an unearned run. So that is still Morgan McGuire pitching for ODU as he offers a ball and a strike to Frank, one and one. I must say, I assumed he would come out after the double play. He's at now 107 pitches, but 
They're sticking with what works. Trailing only by a run. Frank pops it up. Shallow right. Coming in and squeezing it is Will Morgan to start this seventh inning. I think they're going to try to, as and to be fair, the bullpen hasn't been that good for for the Monarchs here in this series. So stick with what works. Joe Montez, one for three, singled back in the fifth. Wire misses up high, ball one. And the 1 0. Misses away. Two balls and no strikes. So not only has he thrown 110 pitches in this game, obviously thrown very well. He's done it with, is he wearing half sleeves underneath his jersey? He, I mean, may as well be short sleeved out there in this weather. He is behind in the count to Montez, 3-0. and There's just been three walks by McGuire. Make it four on a four-pitch walk to Montez. All of his other walks have come against lefties. Speaking of lefties, David Miranda, he's reached three times, a single, a walk, and he's got on on a fielder's choice, so he's one for two. I think that's going to do it for McGuire. That's Coach Finwood coming out of the ODU third base dugout. I think they were going to stick with him as long as he could retire batters, but on a four-pitch walk to Montez, that's going to be the hook. So we're going to tell you about the new Old Dominion pitch, Old Dominion pitcher with an out and a run on, runner on in this top of the seventh inning. So as David Miranda is due to bat for your Owls, ODU will counter with a left-handed reliever and Isaiah Nelson. We saw him yesterday. It's easy to forget that he pitched in the game as he only faced two or four batters, I should say. He threw two-thirds of an inning. Giving up no hits. He walked a batter. He had a wild pitch. He had a strikeout. In uh, what ended up being a scoreless seventh. The last scoreless inning by ODU pitching yesterday in, in the game. It's going to be his ninth appearance on the season. He's no record and a 6.23 earned run average. First pitch is on the inside corner to Miranda, 0-1. Eight and two-thirds innings, ten hits, six runs earned with three walks and 12 strikeouts. For the sophomore left-hander. And he's quickly ahead of Miranda, 0-2 on two called strikes. With one out, Montez was issued a four-pitch walk that Spelled the end for McGuire. Nelson trying to keep this one to nothing deficit. And he will get Miranda swinging on a breaking ball and a three pitch strikeout. Now Pedro Pages. And it looks like.
looks like Nelson's going to stick around, not just a one pitch or a one batter outing for Nelson. Going to face the right-hander, Pages. Pedro singled his last time up. He's one for three. Throw over to first, and Montez back standing. Nelson comes upstairs with a fastball, ball one. Once more, the Owls clinging to this slim one to nothing lead which is a far cry from what the offense has been able to put up this last handful of games. 2-0 to Pages. Here's a chopper to third, taken on the short hop by Lamb. And he throws across. Nice play. Scooping it out of the grass. Slam to end the inning. So Nelson gets the only two batters he faces out. As we go to the stretch. And still a one to nothing. Ball game. FAU. Will be a new Owls pitcher coming up to face three, four, and five of Old Dominion in the bottom of the seventh inning. Lamb, Pasquantino, and Morgan will be Mark Nowotnik, the senior right hander, in place of Vince Coletti. He gets a called strike to Lamb. 0 and 1. Wow, three left-handers in a row. And Nowotnik is the choice. 1-0 with a 2.89 earn run average. This is his eighth appearance. The 0-1. It's just a bit low. In nine and a third innings, Mark has given up three hits and three runs, four walks and ten strikeouts. Batters hitting a team low .097 against him. 
His 1-1 one, one is going to come inside and catch Lamb on the elbow pad or maybe the the side there. That is the first hit batter of the season by Nowotnik and brings the go-ahead run to the plate in Vinny Pasquantino who has been on base once today. He's one for two with a single he was caught stealing. If you're playing the percentages, this would have set up well for an Owls left-hander, but we saw Clemente yesterday. We've already seen Swan in the series. First pitch to Pasquantino misses outside ball one. And the Owls playing more of a uh, typical defense with the runner on base. Frank is a handful of steps away from the second base bag, but he is on the third base side of second. And Montez playing his regular third base position. 1-0, catches the outside corner, 1-1. One one. Wadnick is a compact. This is outside, 2-1, he's... Five foot eleven. No, he's six foot even. Two hundred pounds. It's behind in the count to Pasquantino two and one. There goes the runner. Swung on to left. Johnson makes the catch and retreating back to first is Lamb. First out of the seventh. Now Will Morgan. Guess there would be some thought here if peek into the mind of the two head coaches. If the Owls had gone to a lefty here, Old Dominion does have Brian Morley, who started in the first two games, a right handed option off the bench. Had it come to that. First pitch to Morgan is swing and a miss over the top of the breaking ball from Nowotnik. 0 and 1. One is fouled off to the left-hand side. That's car hunting. Wanting ahead, 0-2. Has to get one on the outside corner. That's where Abraham set up. But Morgan lays off of it. One and two. The Owls a run on five hits, no errors. Old Dominion, no runs, three hits, two errors. One, two. This hit up the middle. Frank spins, throws to first, throws it away, and going to third will be Lamb. Tying run 90 feet away with just one out. Frank went a long way up the middle. Spun in the short grass in right field and threw past Lambert. And with one out, it is Will Morgan. Well, in the first six innings today against Vince Coletti, the 
Monarchs did not have a runner to reach second, let alone third. I think that may spell the end of the day for Nowotnik with runners on the corners and one out. Hit by pitch. A fly out and an error. As McCormack scales the mound, he's not made an indication towards the bullpen, nor taken the ball away from Nowotnik. Well, at least for now, they're going to stick with Nowotnik. And he will need to bear down here. There's a tying run at third. Runner at first and only one out. Battle is one for two. He singled his last time up, an infield single. Still a debated but in the scorebooks officially as a hit. Kevin Abraham is going to come out from behind the plate, and signal to his defense, position them. The Owls in double play depth. Battle has some speed out of the batter's box. Would be difficult to double up. First pitch. Bounces in. Did he go? He did not. Ball one. Some time called before the second pitch of this at bat. Fake throw over to first. Morgan dies back in, though there was no throw. Well, McGuire got out of bases loaded and one out. We'll see if Nowadnik can do something similar. Runners on the corners, one out, and time call to the play by battle. has already been a long at bat and it's only had one pitch. And again, somewhere, somebody has called timeout. The pitch misses away. Two balls and no strikes. And as all of this occurs, the ODU crowd starting to liven up here. Two and zero to battle. Stock on deck. Fouled off to the right hand side and out of play. Two and one. Squaring to Bunn and offering at it is battle, and he missed it. Two and two. Trying to bunt across the tying run. Wanick, best case scenario, obviously would be a double play, but if he could get a strike out here and not have the ball put in play, that would be big too. The 2-2 two -two fouled again to the right-hand side. And on to our adjoining street, 43rd, I believe, runs to our right. So still two and two to battle. And it's 
popped up again. And we'll do it again. Another foul ball. The group in front of me here must have a car in that general area because every time a ball goes that way, they're all peeking that direction to see. So still two and two to battle. He's, forward off, he's fouled off four straight. This will be the seventh pitch of the at-bat. And he'll call time at the plate. One issue, two we have to worry about here. On either side with runners on third is the ball getting away from the catcher. We've seen so many of those this weekend. The 2-2. Two -two. And Abraham trapped that one and kept it from going to the backstop. It'll run the count full. Three and two with one out. Quickly over there at first base, the ODU assistant went right to his runner. That's Victor Diaz. Went right there to Morgan to tell him what to do on the 3-2. As it's chopped back to Nawadnik, he'll go to the plate. Abraham applies the tag. As he is slid into by, uh, by Lamb, he's out. Abraham holding the back of his neck and is going to get checked out here by Max Diaz. Good play by Nawadnik. Good heads up play. Lamb was coming the whole way. The one two put out. is the second out of the inning. They're going to give Abraham a little bit of time to recover here. He blocked the plate, held on to the ball, Second applied the tag. Seems like the slide kind of jarred some things, maybe on his in his back and neck. Morgan advances to second, battles at first, and with two outs, Eric Stock. Stock today 0 for 2, strikeout and a fielder's choice. First pitch swinging to short. Frank's going to go to third, and it's going to be was that either off the base runner or off of Montez's glove? And the inning continues with two outs and the bases loaded. A routine play. Frank had his momentum taking him towards third, but he had second. He had the play at first as well. But he tried to go to third, and Battle made his way in between the throw, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it hit him or just it shielded the view of Montez and he couldn't make the play. Swing and a miss on the first pitch to Bell. Bell chops it down the third base line. It's going to be a tough play. Montez not in time. And the ball game is tied. And that was another bang, bang play at first. We're all tied up at one to one. Now Devin Adams, just a little squibbler off the bat. Montez went a long way and made it as close as he possibly could. Now the go-ahead run is at third with two outs. And what's a shame about this, well, obviously besides, if you're an Owls fan, the score is Vince Coletti's fantastic performance is going to be a no decision. No 
Watney misses well outside. Ball one. Adams today, a line out, double play, and a walk. The 1-0 to him. Excuse me, swing off the netting right behind us, or right behind him. 1-1, one one, right in front of us. Two errors in the inning. Upstairs, 2-1. Two and, and just the one hit, Bell's infield single to tie this ball game. 2-1. Outside corner for a called strike. Count evens up at 2, and fans don't like that one either. Break even pitch. Right down the middle, called third strike. That will end the inning. Nowatnik is able to strand the bases loaded, but Old Dominion gets a run on a hit. We'll head to the eighth in a tie ball game right after this. Brand new ball game as we go to the eighth inning. It is one to one. And it is a new pitcher for Old Dominion. They're going to go with a freshman right hander in Hunter Gregory. If I can find it, Gregory is. Two and two with a 5.32 on run average. Six appearances, four starts. And a lot of crooked numbers here. 22 innings, 19 hits, 13 runs earned, 16 walks, and 21 strikeouts. He actually started in the midweek game this past Wednesday against BMI and got the win. He'll face Wilson, Lambert, and Rivera in a one-to-one -one game with even lines on each side. One run, five hits, two errors. First pitch misses. I'm guessing low to Wilson, 1-0. Cody today was hit by a pitch his last time up, otherwise 0 for 2. And a called strike, 1-1. One one. The Owls with the run in the fourth on a wild pitch. The Monarchs a run in the seventh on a bases loaded infield single with two outs. Upstairs two and one. The Sunday finale. Opening weekend of conference play. Two one pitch. Foul to the right hand side. It's two and two. 
Gregory is the third pitcher of the day for Old Dominion, following McGuire and Nelson. Two two. This is inside, and it's full. Now the payoff on the outside corner. Wilson didn't like it. But is down on strikes. Gunnar Lambert today has reached three times. He's walked twice and singled. And he fouls this pitch off of the catcher, Devin Adams. He's down on a knee. Oh and one. Going to get checked out by a couple of members of the Monarch staff. Coach Finn Wood's going to come out as well. Took a handful of steps towards the dugout. In some definite pain. He's not really stood still since they've checked on him. It's an 0 and 1 count to Lambert with an out recorded here in the top of the eighth. They're going to throw to Adams a couple times. He says he's fine. Remain in the game. Off the outside corner, one ball, one strike. Gregory is a six foot two, two hundred pound right hander from Chesapeake, Virginia. One one. It's a breaking ball in there for a called strike. steps out ahead of the one two and a lot of times at this point batters seem to be wiping their eyes and their eyes are watering one two is a pitch just low two balls two strikes I started to hesitate because our home plate umpire has deliberate calls especially on strike three two two and that is strike three a nice breaking pitch there Two strikeouts looking for Gregory and Eric Rivera, who does not have a hit yet today. He's over to three. Two flyouts. He struck out swinging his last time up. Old Dominion pitching now has nine combined strikeouts. Low to Rivera, 1 and 0. And the 1 0 is low and away. Two balls, no strikes. Adams will sprint out from behind the plate to hand deliver the baseball to Gregory and have quick chat. Two zero. Upstairs. Three balls, no strikes. And a 
a four-pitch walk to Rivera. So he'll reach with two outs. Kevin Abraham will have to shed the shin guards and step to the plate. He's reached twice, reached three times today. Kevin was hit by a pitch his last time up after twice making it to first on errors. Rivera getting a big secondary lead over there at first base, and so Gregory throws over, and as soon as the ball is back to the pitcher, Rivera's off the bag again. It's the fifth walk drawn by an FAU hitter. Gregory misses up, ball one. By the way, when Abraham was hit by the pitch a couple of innings ago, he's going to break a tie and move into fifth place all time, sixth place all time by himself with 28 career hit by pitch. Swings and misses here at a fastball, one and one, 88 miles an hour for Gregory. first and Rivera's back in standing. Eric this season is two for two on stolen bases. Abraham holds up on a pitch right down the middle so it's a called strike it doesn't matter. One and two. Swings and misses here. It's the second time in this game that Old Dominion pitching has struck out the side, sending it to the bottom of the eighth, and still a one-to-one -one game after this. Top third of the ODU lineup to face Martin Awadnik out for his second inning of action. Schwartz and Wyndham and Lamb. If anybody reaches, and if you're an Owls fan, you hope not, pass Quintino. One to one. Bottom of the eighth inning. Schwartz today. 0 for 3. Two ground outs and a strikeout. Wadney gets a first pitch strike, 0-1. Oh 
Nowatnik, in his inning of work, gave up just one hit, but it was a bases-loaded infield single with two outs that scored Old Dominion's only run. Outside one and one, he had a better reach on it. Had a better hit by a pitch. Had a better reach on an error. Had a scenario in which the inning continued on another error, and then that infield single. One and two, Schwartz. Wadding misses outside, 90 miles an hour on that one. Two balls, two strikes. Two-two. Popped over our heads and out of play. We'll do it again. Chopper down the left field line and foul. Still two and two. For what it's worth, Wyndham Lamb, Pasquantino, Morgan, the next four Old Dominion batters are left-handed. If they all wanted to go that way after this at bat. As it's lined to right, David Miranda down on a knee makes the catch to start this ninth inning, or eighth inning, I should say, bottom of the eighth. Starts out number 20, right, Wyndham. Now it's Wyndham. Wyndham is 0 for 3. Twice he tapped it back to the pitcher, Coletti. Once was a ground out to Frank at short. Breaking ball and a good one for a called strike, 0-1. The Wadnick thought to be a possible candidate preseason to be an Owl starter. Settled into this bullpen roll. The 0-1 misses inside. One ball, one strike. Sawed off down the left field line. That's going to go beyond the brick wall. And everybody will have to reset. One, two. Up and away, two balls, two strikes. And another fall ball to the left-hand side. Looking ahead to the Owls' ninth, they'll have Diamond Johnson leading it off. And then back to the top of the lineup, Frank Montez, if anybody reaches Miranda. Two, and another foul ball down the left field line. No one extends. Face on as he receives the sign. Tucks the glove under his left arm. 
and then turns and kicks. Up and in. Full count. Three balls. Two strikes. And apparently no appeal. Wyndham held up and will draw the walk on a pitch just off the plate outside. He'll reach with one out for Culver Lamb. Lamb struck out, grounded out. He was hit by a pitch and was thrown out at home in the seventh. And a fielder's choice. Infield. Right back to the pitcher it was. Tying or go-ahead run is at first now with one out. sure what we've got going on here. We're breaking the action or home plate up higher, writing something down. First pitch to Lamb is popped up into center, left center. Wilson in front of Johnson makes the catch. And with two outs, Benny Pasquantino. One for three. Flew out to the left his last time up. Last inning. First pitch to him is through the right side. If the shift had been employed, that would have been right to Rivera. So Miranda drops the ball, but already headed to third was Wyndham. Second hit of the game for Pasquantino puts runners at first and third. And two outs for Will Morgan. David Cobb's going to come out of the Owls dugout to have a quick word with his battery. We're going to bring in the whole infield now. First pitch to Morgan, misses outside. Ball one. The one zero -oh is hit past the diving Rivera. And Old Dominion takes the lead with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Rivera broke towards the second base bag, and then by the time he switches momentum the other direction, it was too late. He could not catch up with Morgan's RBI single to make it 2-1 to one ODU.
Kyle Battle reached on a fielder's choice. He's one for three today. Fielder's choice last inning. Pasquantino at second, Morgan at first. Milwaukee's first pitch to battle, bounces in, knocked down by Abraham. Back to back, two out singles. After a one out walk in this eighth inning has proven to be the difference. To this point, it's two to one. ODU. 1 0 pitch, catches the outside corner, 1 1. Ball to the right hand side. One and two. And the chopper to short. Frank to Rivera. And that'll end the inning. But Old Dominion takes a two to one lead as we go. Owl's final shot, Diamond Johnson, Tyler Frank, Joe Montez after this. First pitch in the ninth inning is from Hunter Gregory to Diamond Johnson. And it is a called strike on the inside corner. Owls trailing two to one. It's Old Dominion. Johnson up the middle off the glove of Gregory. It slowed it down just enough for Wyndham and Pasquantino with the stretch to retire Diamond. One out, Tyler Frank. That ball had eyes for the middle. Probably would have made it up the middle had Gregory not deflected it. And right to Wyndham. And Wyndham to Pasquantino for the out. One out, Tyler Frank. Frank today is one for four. First pitch to him. 
is a fly ball to center. That's going to be a quick and easy two outs. And it's up to Joe Montez. Montez today is one for three with a walk. Owls down to their final out. First pitch is a called strike. A one. Montez is going to extend this ball game with a looping liner to right center. He'll be held to first. Now it's David Miranda. Right fielder number 10, David Miranda. Tying run at first. Go ahead, run at the plate with two outs. Miranda swings and misses at the first pitch, 0-1. He's 1 for 3 also with the walk, singled all the way back in the first. Struck out swinging his last time up. The 0-1, misses away. One ball, one strike. Pitch is popped up left field. Battle coming a long way. Wyndham's going out. They nearly run into each other, but Battle makes the catch to end the ball game. So the Owls will fall in the series finale, snapping a seven-game winning streak by the finals or seven yes seven-game winning streak by the final score of two to one. Two runs, seven hits, and two errors for. Old Dominion, one run, five hit, one run, six hits, and two errors for your Owls. FAU drops to 15 and five on the season, and two to one, two and one in conference play. Old Dominion's going to go to eight and 11 and one and two. So your final score for the final time in a game that lasted about. Two hours and 45 minutes. Old Dominion 2, FAU 1. This has been Jonathan Brazier from Norfolk saying thank you to everyone out there for graciously listening. Have a great rest of your Sunday. And we'll be back on the air on Wednesday night in Coral Gables against the U. Until then, good afternoon from Norfolk.